on today's episode, we're going to be replacing the battery of a Garmin 520. Hello and welcome to Time for Bikes. This is a channel where we like to undertake some repairs, look at different rides that we undertake and also review some products. So overall, I rate the Garmin 520 unit. The only thing it seems to have always suffered with is quite poor battery life. That as time's gone on and we've charged it more and more, uh, has got even worse. Uh, I bought a unit, the one which we'll be using today, for only £24 on eBay, plus a bit of postage, it's about £27 all in all. And uh, the seller made us all very aware when we were bidding on this that its battery life was quite short. I have spent a bit of time reviewing other Garmin 520 battery replacement videos online, and I'm not saying that they are really poor, but what I would say is I think I've put together here a safe method of doing it. Um, it's using tools that I believe uh, are going to get the job done properly with the minimum risk of breaking the unit while taking it apart. OK, so I hope this helps you. Um, let's get going. You will need a 3M double sided sticky pad and a new battery. Both the links to uh, get these are in the description below. A soldering iron with some solder. Some plastic opening tools and a small screwdriver um, of both a Phillips and a flat head. Also, you will need some scissors. I use a, a large precision tool kit. Um, you can get those from uh, Amazon easy enough. Again, the link will be in the descri description below. So tr first of all, I try to open the unit without um, doing anything else other than using the plastic tool and that was pretty much unsuccessful. So I decided to add some heat. Thanks to my wife, I borrowed a hairdryer and just applied heat gently until it was uh, warm to touch on the screen, but not what I would say is hot. Um, this may need to be done a couple times throughout the removal of the screen. Working your way very slowly around the unit, you can slowly prise the screen from the plastic base of the unit itself. But please make sure you're very patient doing this. In my eyes, this is the hardest part of the whole job. So once the heat is actually applied, the screen does start to peel up quite nicely. Um, just be careful with this one. Make sure you peel the screen off from the top down to the bottom. So that means try and get the tool under the Garmin logo end first, because there's a ribbon cable inside the unit located lower down. Um, and if you try to remove the screen from the bottom, you might risk pulling on that and damaging it. So once you're at this part and the screen is off, you can now concentrate on taking the motherboard out and revealing the battery below. There's four screws, they're easily removed. Just use a small Phillips head screwdriver and they will come out easily.
once again using your plastic removal tool get it just under the edge of the battery to help start removing it from the base it does have a layer of double-sided adhesive which keeps it really nicely firm and secure Now that the battery is loose, you will notice that two wires directly from the battery feed onto the speaker down below. Just snip them off with your scissors and uh, we'll remove those wires later. Next, release the battery connector from the motherboard using a flat bladed screwdriver. Use your flat headed screwdriver here just to really scrape off all of that old screen adhesive from the plastic bottom of the unit. Uh, you will be able to uh, probably notice there's some left actually on the screen itself as well, but use the plastic opening tool for that uh, so we don't scratch any of the screen. Once again though, just take your time, have some patience and you'll make a really good job of doing this. First of all, make sure you can desolder both of the wires off the speaker. One has already been removed here. Now apply some new solder to the tip of the iron and tin your wires, then solder them onto the speaker the same way that they came off. Now it's time to replace our battery back into the base of the unit. To do this, we need to have some of our sticky pad cut out and applied to the back of the battery. Just roughly cut it out, but make sure you leave enough of the sticky pad so that we can complete the rest of the work. So it's probably best just to take some from the corner like this. Now we need to make the uh, screen adhesive uh, the right size to be able to stick the screen back into place once we've completed the rest of the work. It's quite easy, just draw around the outside of the unit, but take into account that when you actually cut this out from the adhesive itself, you want to cut out just a tiny bit smaller so that it fits in nicely around the inner part of the plastic unit. Next, cut out the centre part of the pad. We only need a border of about 2-3 to three millimetres wide to be able to stick the screen successfully back into place. So now we just attach the connector from the battery onto the motherboard and once that's clicked into place we test it to just make sure that everything works okay. Now it's time to place the screen adhesive in place ready for eventually putting the screen back on. 
if there's any part of this whole method that I may have done slightly wrong, it's putting this in at this point. I believe sticking it in before the start of step six would have made the whole job a little bit easier. Now find the four original screws that were taken out from the motherboard back at the beginning. You just need to screw those back in and then get ready for the last two steps. So at this point, I'd just like to ask that if you found this video or this content interesting or indeed helpful, please can you just take a moment to like the video at the end. It helps our channel massively. And talking about the channel, why not subscribe? Have a quick look, see if there's anything else which takes your fancy of what we've been up to, and uh, you'll be posted as soon as something new comes out. So before the final test, we just need to install the screen back in place. It should be all ready to go, but as you push it down, make sure that there's nothing stopping it going down. And then just gently but firmly at the same time, make sure that you push those edges down well. So for the final test, check all of its functionality, use all the buttons, check the screen display, backlight comes on, make sure it starts up obviously absolutely fine as well a few times and you're as good as done. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Why not check out some of our other videos on screen now and until I see you again, take care and happy cycling.